As much as we mothers love to joke about the messiness of our families and how like, ah, this house would stay clean if nobody else lived here, if it was just me. The truth is we love our families. We love taking care of our families. Many of us, maybe you included, view our job as a homemaker as our job. It's something that we find very rewarding, something that we invest our time in, but also something that we want to function well, just like any other business would want strategies, tools, techniques, systems to keep things running really well and smoothly. And that is what most homemakers do. We develop systems and protocols and we keep things flowing and functioning well to get these human beings from tiny and helpless to grown up productive human beings in the world. At least that's the goal. What you need is a homemaking routine that is custom, curated, bespoke, if you will, for your very unique family. If you don't have a good routine, get one. And I'm gonna help you do that. I'm not just gonna tell you you need one and then leave you hanging, of course. I'm gonna help you make and develop that today in this video. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to build a homemaking routine, schedule, rhythm that works for you. The very first thing you need to know is that so often when we just download somebody else's idea of what a cleaning schedule, rhythm, routine should look like, and we try to just implement that in our own life, it doesn't really work. Copy and paste is not a really good method. We can often turn that into like very rigid protocols that we must follow, which of course, as you probably know by now as a mother, uh, flexibility is key. And if you try to have something that is like super rigid, super regimented, it's likely going to fail you every time. And then you are going to feel like a failure in return. Then you will give up. It's a whole cycle. This is why in the past, if you've tried other homemaking routines, schedules, cleaning things that haven't worked, it's likely because you were attempting to sort of copy and paste someone else's rhythm routine schedule into your own life and that just doesn't work well. When we ask ourselves, all right, well, what did the women who came before us, the mothers, the grandmothers, what did they do? What worked for them? Maybe we should not just so quickly like rebuff what they've done and assume it's outdated. Maybe there's some really good gems that we can pull out of that. And I think that there are. One thing that they used to do was have days of the week for different things. So it would be laundry day, baking day, gardening day. And that apparently worked pretty well for them. Well, you see, if I just left the laundry all to one day, it would get so intense. I would never get through it. I tend to get very like hyper focused. I would just kind of ignore everything else. So if it was laundry day, I was just doing laundry. That's it. Forget everything else. You're all dead to me. The problem with that is if you are actually living in your home day to day, it's likely getting messed up and somewhat dirty every single day as well. So if we only focus on one thing, it's like everything else crumbles around us. And then by the time you get to that, it's way worse than it was a week ago when you've last paid attention to it. The good news is, is that if we can find a way to build a schedule and a routine that actually works for us, it's going to give you more free time. Let me say that again for the people in the back. It's going to give you more free time, which we love and we want more of. We want more time to do the things that we love and enjoy and not so much time just cleaning all day, day in, day out, unless you love that. But most of us don't wanna be doing that all the time, right? We want some free time to do things like, oh, I don't know, play my favorite game, June's Journey. Today's video sponsor is June's Journey. I'm thrilled to have them as a sponsor because I do in fact play and love this game. It is a hidden object mystery game, basically the only game that I play on my phone. When I have true downtime to relax, I love this because it combines like all the vintagey vibes that I love, but also like the home decor renovation and stuff. It's really fun. Like I said, it's a hidden object mystery game. You also have like this detective storyline because you're trying to solve this mystery. It takes place in like the 1920s, so it has all of the just like, ugh, beautiful like clothing and chachi keys and things of the past that just make me swoon, to be totally honest. You're kind of like the main protagonist, June, and you're off trying to help solve a murder mystery. It's amazing. It's so fun. I will have a link down below in the description box where you can download the game, play for free. I'll also have a QR code here on screen. Just take a picture of that take you right to it. Easy peasy. I really think that you will love playing this game in your downtime. You get to customize and remodel your mansion and garden island. It's so beautiful. Such a fun game to play. And it's a great way to give yourself a fun little break from all of your housekeeping chores. Imagine that you live on a mansion and have a garden island. I know right back to reality, most of us don't have a garden island. But if we did, we'd need a routine to take care of it. You need a spine. That is the first thing. This is the thing that I think often goes wrong in how we build schedules, is that we don't think about the fact that we need a spine to our daily cleaning routines, 
rhythms, homemaking routines. Think of it like the core work that you do in school, you know, math, writing, and reading. Those are like the core subjects. Well, this is the same thing when it comes to homemaking. You need a spine. These are your daily activities that you need to do every day in order to have your home be in the condition in which you would like it to stay. If you try to save all of anything for just one day, most likely that is going to have like a multi-car crash effect in your life. And what happens when life happens and you don't get to do that thing on that day? Well, now it's really backed up. You really have a problem because now you haven't done this thing for two weeks. At least in my experience, it's been very hard to have everything jammed up into one day a week. So to me, these are things like tidy up, do a 10 minute tidy, making sure that I've just kind of picked things up and it's not like a total disaster, running the dishwasher every night before you go to bed, uh, giving the floor a quick sweep, or for me, I grab my vacuum and I take the handle out and I use like the handheld portion and I just run around and suck up all the dog hair that accumulates in the corners and under the cabinets and stuff. It drives me nuts and it accumulates so fast. So that for me often takes the place of sweeping, a quick pickup with the vacuum of like the hair and other stuff that's made its way into my house during the day. Most of the tasks that are a part of my spine, my sort of daily routine schedule, are tasks that are gonna take me five to maybe 10 minutes a piece. There are things that can be done pretty quickly and just part of the general upkeep of our home to keep anything from backing up. The great thing is, is like once you've developed whatever the spine is for you, now you can start building off of that. You can start adding in slightly larger projects or days or more in-depth cleaning in certain areas. If you're working on a big declutter, you don't want your whole house to become a mess while you're trying to declutter and simplify everything. So having that sort of daily spine of like, these are the things I do every day, no matter what, with very few exceptions, but sometimes there are some, but you know what I mean, very few exceptions ever. These are the things I do every single day. Then we can build off of that and we haven't created a huge backlog. Now is the fun part because now you get to dream a little bit, plan a little bit, get a little bit excited, think about the things that you would really love to do or to tackle or things that you would love to just know that you've gotten taken care of ahead of time. So maybe for you, you are working on decluttering your home Home, so you want to designate days or times to work on that. If you haven't seen my video about the power of 10 minutes, I highly recommend that you watch that because it gives you a lot of ideas for 10 to 15 minute tasks that you can do that move that ball down the field a little bit, getting you closer to decluttering, tackling things like 10, 15 minutes at a time. But if you are able to designate days of the week to this, then you can really start to make some forward progress. For me, one of those things is doing as much cooking ahead as I can. It's one of the areas I've been working on a lot in building better systems and routines for my family is on our food because I just feel like we spend so much time in the kitchen cooking. So having a day that is designated after and during my sort of daily spine of housework is being done, I'm building off of that by adding in, you know, time in that day that I am working on freezer meals or batch cooking a bunch of chicken with taco seasoning for our various Mexican meals throughout the week. And you don't have to do that. Whatever's going to be helpful or beneficial to you. Maybe as a homeschooling mom, you need a day for planning, regrouping, grading papers, and that kind of thing. So you can have that as one of your like theme days for the week. I like to think of them as theme days because it seems a little more fun. A theme sounds so much more fun than a task, doesn't it? The great part about this is it's totally unique to you. Your theme days can be whatever you want them to be, whatever you need them to be. I like to have an errand day. I'm such a homebody, I don't like to leave my house all that often. I prefer to just smash all my errands into one day and have a day where I'm going out and about in public leaving my house. And the goal is to take care of as many of the errands that I need to run in a day as possible. I also like to have a deep cleaning day. So like I said, I have to kind of keep on top of either vacuuming or sweeping on the daily as part of my spine to my homemaking schedule, but I like to have a deep cleaning day and that's where I can tackle things like baseboards, fans, vacuuming out my air filters, maybe taking the covers off the sofa if they need it. It just kind of depends on what the house needs on my deep cleaning day. That is the day that I 
dive a little bit deeper beyond just the surface level cleaning. I also wanna add here that I have eight children and they have chores, so they are helping with these things, with these daily tasks, as well as with some of the deeper cleaning tasks, etc. There's often areas of the home that I am sort of responsible for solely, that I don't expect my children to clean or keep up with my own room, my bathroom, etc. So there's a lot of communal areas that we sort of share chores in, but there are things that I want to do or I feel like need to be done that aren't necessarily done by my children. So you get it, if you have kids, you get it. They have chores, but that doesn't mean they do everything. We're currently in the winter time, so there's not as much to do, but I also love a good gardening day where I can focus on taking care of things that I need to take care of within the garden. Again, there's daily maintenance required in my flower garden and my vegetable garden, so that's part of the daily routine, but when I have a gardening day of the week, that's the day of the week that the extra stuff, if I wanna like start some new seeds, or if I really need to go through and do like a better weeding or pruning job somewhere, or if I wanna build a new gardening bed for something, those are the kind of things that I can get done on my gardening day. When you are creating this schedule and rhythm, it's about developing for yourself what is the spine, what are the things that you are gonna do on the daily, every day, and then having your kind of theme days on top of that, allowing you to do more, to get a little extra, to dive a little deeper into something. But the key is, you can't get so rigid with this that it becomes a punishment instead of something that makes our life easier. So we have to be flexible, just like with everything in parenting, mothering, homeschooling, raising kids, all of it. Flexibility is key because life is going to happen. Things are going to get in the way. Things are gonna happen and you're not gonna to get to your gardening day. I try to keep my theme days to be things that are not such high priority that if they get missed, if all I can do is my daily stuff that day, that it's going to be a big deal or cause a major like backup in my life. For me, that's how I keep this flexible and fun and something that works for me and can be easily changed or reworked as times change and as things Things change We've, we have to stay nimble okay we have to have the ability to be flexible to the ever-changing landscape of families and children and all the things if you would like a little extra help with creating yours check down below in the description box because I do have a very simple workbook for you that can help kind of walk you through the steps some questions to ask yourself some things to think about to help you develop your own old-fashioned homemaking routine and schedule that will work for you and your family that's not based off of what I do or what anyone else does, but solely based off of what matters to you, what you need to get done, and what will work for your family. You can download June's Journey for free by clicking the link down below in my description box or the QR code here on screen. They've got it for Android, iOS, all the things. It's great. It's fun. You will love it. I do. 